and welcome to Community Cooking with Cardinals High School Cafe. We are very blessed to have with us once again. I always describe you as the heart and soul of our building, but uh, Mr. Brian Finnamore is here, and I'm so glad that you could make it in today. Thank you for coming. It's nice to be back, and I'm always uh, very happy to be on uh, Rogers Community Kitchen. Nice. Um, so today we're going to talk about a few different things, but I really wanted to get started by talking about our unique position, I guess, in terms of the school board and um, the ability for us to be able to bond with the community through the sort of pastoral community in our school, and that is because the, our school is located right beside St. Mary's Church. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about was every year we have a procession, and um, it's really something that allows us to understand the importance of, you know, Catholic faith, but also get to see other community members. Why don't you tell us a, a little bit about that? Well, I first of all would just like to maybe uh, let the people who are watching at home kind of know where our school is. And we're uh, partnered with St. Mary's Church. And St. Mary's Church is one of the oldest churches in the Archdiocese of Toronto. And uh, it's uh, right in downtown Brampton. And it's, uh, if you've never been to Brampton, it really is worth the drive to go. Mm -hmm. Because uh, downtown Brampton is very quaint. Uh, the buildings are, uh, are very old and uh, Brampton existed uh, well before the GO trains and well before the highways and uh, I guess it was a stop on the Grand Trunk Railroad. So it was a separate little community that grew and grew and it was an agricultural community and it's, uh, it's a beautiful little town. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if the people at home, if they have hockey skates or pleasure skates, they could go up and there's a nice park called Gage Park up in Brampton and it's right across the street from St. Mary's Church and what makes St. Mary's uh, you can park at St. Mary's Church and go to the park just don't tell Father Laborio that <laughs> I told you to do that but you go and uh, there's a uh, outdoor skating and it's a beautiful pathway through the trees oh it is beautiful and there's an old mm -hmm. band shell and it's all free and people can go skating there and as you go skating through the park along the trail it's almost like a one of those Dickens scenes, Charles Dickens scenes. And it's just beautiful. They have it all decorated for the holiday season. And uh, you get a chance, you get a real flavor of Brampton. And uh, St. Mary's Church is a real integral part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, an old parish, uh, beautiful old houses all around, and high-rises apartments for the, uh, you know, the, the newcomers to Brampton, mm -hmm. and uh, for the uh, younger crowd who maybe, for whatever reason, don't want to have a house or can't afford a house. So, it, it, so it's centrally located. Historically, it's uh, uh, very significant. Uh, it really is the heart and soul of the Catholic presence in Brampton. And they have so many cool uh, outreach activities there. Mm -hmm. Like I know they have a, a morning where people who are unemployed can go and they can network. They can put their suits on and go. And there's a mass there every morning at 9 o'clock. And there's a mass at 7 o'clock. And uh, Father Laborio, who's the uh, present pastor there, and Father Gustavo is his uh, associate pastor. Father Gustavo speaks fluent Spanish. And there's a real Latino community in Brampton. Mm -hmm. Father Laborio uh, speaks, uh, both of them speak English, but Father Laborio is such an excellent uh, preacher and homilist. He also speaks Portuguese. Okay, yes. And yeah. so yeah. he uh, and we are connected to this great church in Brampton. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we have an entree uh, more or less into, uh, you know, what's going on in the city. And uh, in terms of outreach, we can piggyback and partner with them. Uh, he can, uh, because there's affluent pockets of Brampton, uh, from those affluent communities, he can and he does support uh, needy families within our school community. So we have this uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. And uh, Father Laborio, being uh, Portuguese, he has this beautiful uh, spirituality, which our Portuguese friends do. They love processions, and mm -hmm. they love physically getting together and uh, manifesting and living and sharing their faith through processions. Yeah. So we have this unique procession at the beginning of the school year in which <clears throat> our Catholic uh, viewers will know that the Blessed Sacrament, the Body of Christ, is uh, kept in the tabernacle in schools. So students throughout the day, they can come and they can pray before the Blessed Sacrament. 
um, very, very uh, holy uh, for us Catholics, and we're privileged as a school to be able to do this. So what Father Laborio does is, uh, with the help of our students and some of his senior parishioners, we have a procession where we bring uh, the Blessed Sacrament in a, a beautiful uh, gold bowl, which mm -hmm. is known as a ciborium. Mm -hmm. And we uh, process, there's a canopy over Father Laborio and he wears the beautiful cape. And <clears throat> we have the students carrying candles. It's just, uh, it's beautiful. It's, mm -hmm. uh, some people may say, oh, it's old fashioned. But no, I think we, phys as human beings, and I, I know many, many, in fact, I think all of the great religious traditions in the world, they love to do these physical things yes, to yes. manifest the faith, mm -hmm. right? Because we live in a flesh and bones. We live in a, in a real world. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, so it's a beautiful procession and the Blessed Sacrament. And we've got the, the uh, elderly, the retired people from the parish. Uh, if they come along to participate, and many do, they've got their walkers and yes. canes, yeah. and, and the students are uh, all mingled in there. Yes, and, and, and even the students, the way they encourage the, the sort of event. You know, many of them, they, they may not be of the same faith or the same degree of faith to the parishioners that are there, but the, the sort of energy and the feel of them partaking in a, in a, a yes. cultural activity like this yes. is really astounding how they respond to that. They yeah. line up on either side. For sure. But yes, For yeah. sure. And you know, Carrie, like, this is a, a, a weak analogy, but it's an analogy nonetheless. Like even the Santa Claus parade, right? Mm -hmm. There's something very, very special. I think maybe it's in our uh, DNA as human beings. Yes. We love to have the processions. I know, for example, my friends, I have many friends who are going, and mm -hmm. that's in uh, south e southwestern India, right on the coast. They have a procession with the uh, body of St. Francis Xavier. And it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. They just love it. And, and you're Italian, and I'm sure... Yeah, they, I know that there's a, a procession, uh, I think it's by the name of Udoroko, is what they call it. It's with my husband's family, and, and that is unique to their village, the village and that's yes. what they, how they celebrate. Yeah. And I know uh, thousands of Portuguese uh, Catholics were all very, very excited back in October because the statue of Our Lady of Fatima, mm -hmm. it came from Fatima, and... Uh, and of course, you know, some, the statues are symbolic for us. Mm -hmm. The yes. statues, yeah. we don't worship them or anything, but they're symbolic. They're a part of our faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Our Lady of Fatima, the statue, uh, she came from Fatima, and thousands of people came out, and, uh, you know, the Portuguese just love that. Yes, That's, yes, And the absolutely. Italians, too. And, absolutely. you know, I think all of us, we have our... Uh, we have our traditions. And it's nice to see uh, that, you know, I, again, yeah, it's not the same as the Santa Claus Parade, but the enthusiasm with the high school students, and some of them may not be uh, embracing faith, but it's kind of about the idea that you are taking part in a community yes. event, and it's seeing all members of the community in the same yes. place activating towards sort of the same so, idea. So even the non-Catholic students in our school who are very, very welcome and we mm -hmm. love them very much. They may not understand uh, the theology of the Blessed Sacrament and the Eucharist, but they know from the parade, the procession, they know that it's important mm -hmm. to us. Yes. So yeah. they see that and they're exposed to that. And so they'll, in their life, they will understand. And likewise, we learn so much from our, uh, you know, our Muslim brothers and sisters, our Jewish brothers and sisters. We learn and we, by seeing, mm -hmm. by experiencing. I know one of the big parts of our school is in grade 11, we take the students, all of the religion students, on temple tours. Mm -hmm. So they go to a Sikh Gudwara, I think it's called. I, I hope I pronounced that right. They go to a Jewish synagogue. They go to uh, uh, the Muslim. They go to where the Muslims pray. It's a, a beautiful experience. And the kids get to see uh, uh, they get to see sacred spaces. Yes. And yep. uh, in our country, 
that's why I think we're so tolerant, and that's why I think we as a country, we're doing so well. Yes, and I think one of the mandates of, of most of religions, uh, something that we do as well at school, is to sort of give back to your community and yes. to assist the people in need, that sort of ideology of just looking after your fellow beings that are around you. Um, what are some of the things that we do at uh, Cardinal Leger, just in terms of community outreach? Well, you know, uh, we, we follow uh, the secular calendar, right? And so Thanksgiving, when that comes along, and uh, I just uh, recently, the show's being taped just recently after the American Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. uh, we in Canada, I think it's in very enlightened in Canada, we go first, and our Thanksgiving is in October. So in a way to, to uh, show thanks, we share from the abundance that we have. And so we have a big Thanksgiving food drive in which all of the food that we collect is uh, either kept in our school because uh, I think you had Aaron Bloom on mm -hmm. as a yep. uh, guest a few uh, weeks ago. And Aaron has set up, with the help of some teachers at the school, a little uh, food bank right in our school. That's incredible. Yeah. Yes, because there's need right there. It's, and it's getting used. Yes. It's, and it's, it's working. It's there, a system yes. that wasn't in place before that's yes. in place to take care of need. I'm so he has, so a, uh, he has the uh, kids discreetly going in and taking food. And then um, we also have, uh, uh, during Advent, in preparation for Christmas, we have the shoebox campaign where we uh, collect items that we can uh, give uh, to uh, women who are in um, uh, Peel Region women's shelters. Oh. And so, some of these women are, are fleeing very, uh, you know, very uh, sad and troubled uh, domestic situations. And they're fleeing with their children. And the children, I think there are agencies, maybe even the Peel Police are very mm -hmm. good at that. They provide presents for kids. Uh, and other agencies, local businesses too are outstanding to take care of kids. But these mothers receive nothing and they expect yeah. nothing. Yeah. So we're able to, uh, in a shoe box, we, we put in toothbrushes, toothpaste, warm mittens, maybe a toque, maybe a gift card for mm -hmm. a Tim Hortons coffee or something. So we're able to share with these vulnerable uh, women who uh, are so needy and are often forgotten. And they mm -hmm. have no expectations because all they want is their kids to have as normal a Christmas as possible. And then, uh, Carrie, just last week, the city of Brampton uh, competed against Oakville. Yes. And yeah, there was a big, gift food, of giving back. A big mm -hmm. food competition. And Leger was used, uh, I guess, because of our central location and because of the spirit at the school. Uh, I'll throw that second uh, thing in there. But uh, anyway, and we couldn't believe, like you saw, I think there was 15,000 pounds of food Phenomenal. that were collected by the minor hockey associations in their competition. And I haven't heard who won that competition, but I'll tell you who won, the communities, mm -hmm. right? Everybody. And I think that's what the sort of the idea is too. It's it's being able to witness and sort of partake. Yes. I know with the shoe boxes, uh, often the class will whoever's making the shoe box will also just write a little note, yes. not knowing who it's going to go to, yes. but sort of words of encouragement, things that you know, and and that that helps both people really on either end. Yeah. You know, you you are you're giving, but you're receiving so much yes. as the students get to partake in that, and it's really valuable yes. for them to sort of be aware. Yes. to raise awareness to that issue through this this act of kindness. Well, at you know, certain times of the year, uh, it's only natural that we want to, uh, especially in our young people, is develop a sense of empathy. And uh, I think the kids are, uh, like most kids are, they, they're with it. Mm -hmm. I think most of our kids in our schools, they know they're pretty lucky. Mm -hmm. They know because their parents weren't born here. Mm -hmm. They know that their parents or maybe their grandparents sacrificed a lot to come here. Mm -hmm. and, and so they're attuned that there are people who have it worse than them. And they, so I think our kids are pretty wonderful. I, I don't know if it would be as easy in other places, mm -hmm. but uh, I think our, our kids, uh, especially in Peel region, are very, uh, they're attuned. They're I definitely agree with you. And yes. I do think the students are wonderful. And uh, on that note, I'm hoping that you'll think they're wonderful as you have to judge their cook-off coming right I'm up. Ready. So I'm you're ready to stick around and, and hungry, do that? Yes. Well, thank you so much. Stick around. We'll be right back with Brian Finnamore judging the cook-off.
Welcome to Rogers Community Kitchen, where students cook on TV in more ways than one. And we have a real entertaining show for you, and we're going to present that next week. Today we've got Delroy and we've got Finley. And both of these guys are students at Cardinal Leger School. They're in the Specialist High Skills Major Program. And they're going to, uh, Delroy, could you tell uh, our studio audience and our people listening at home, could you tell uh, everyone uh, what grade you're in? I'm in grade 11, actually. Yeah. And uh, Finley. Um, I'm in grade 10. So we have two younger uh, Leger Lancers cooking here today. Delroy, what exactly are you going to prepare and uh, demonstrate for the people at home? Um, today, I'm going to prepare um, a Jamaican, Canadian, uh, barbecue poutine. So you're combining the uh, beauty, the spiciness yeah. of that island, JA, mm. with a Canadian uh, tradition, the French fry. Yeah. And so, like, who says that life isn't spicy? It's going to be beautiful here today. You like the, the, the Jamaican spice? I do, I do. And uh, what's your favorite Jamaican food? Um, my favorite Jamaican food would have to be... The Manish water, do you like that? That's good. Do you know what that is? Uh, Sort of. I it's goat, goat's head soup. Oh, go ahead soup, yes. Uh, of boy, I love it. Yeah. And uh, oxtail, probably. Oxtail, of course. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, Jamaica is, is one of the most special places on earth. Finley, what are you going to be preparing? So, I'm going to be preparing a little bit of fried rice, and then all this seasoning here, I'm going to dissolve it into this pan after the rice. And then I'm going to whisk this egg with the rice also. Okay. And then when that's done, I'm going to put it back on the plate. Then I'm going to put some a little bit of chicken, chicken breast right there, sliced up uh, to bite-sized pieces. And then I'm going to mix it all together, and then it's going to be barbin chicken. Oh, okay. So, and what what is the dish called that you're preparing? Barbin chicken. Bourbon chicken with like rice. Bourbon Street in uh, Louisiana. Yes. Oh, very good. Uh, have you ever been to uh, Louisiana? No, I haven't. Yeah, it's one of those places, and it's a great place to go for uh, Mardi Gras. A lot of Catholics down in uh, in uh, Baton Rouge and uh, New Orleans. I guess they call it New Orleans, and uh, it's beautiful. That's uh, the the big festival that they have down there is always the day before Ash Wednesday. That's when Mardi Gras is, and uh, of course down in Brazil as well. They have the big Mardi Gras parade, which is uh, quite special. Okay, so now those French fries look like they've been uh, slightly prepared, Delroy. Have you already cooked them? Yeah, so I pre-cook them so that okay. when I can, um, when they're ready to serve, I can just put some cheese on it, naturally they'll melt, and I have time to cook the bacon at the same time. Okay, so, okay, very good. So you're heating it up, yes. and I see you're frying the rice. Yes. Now, now Del Delroy, you, you look like a natural here. Have you been watching the, uh, do you watch cooking shows on TV? Of course. What have, would be your favorite show? Um, my favorite show, to be honest, would be Chop. And why is that a, a special show for you? Like, why is that? It's a special show for me because me and my dad watch it. And back at home, me and my dad have conversations when cooking. Yes. So, like, say one night he'll make something for dinner. I'll make it the next night, but I'll make it better. Cause... And do you use the actual recipes you see on the show? Have you ever done that? Yeah, I have. I have. You have, eh? So, your mom's pretty lucky then, eh? Is, yeah. uh, yet she has two men mm -hmm. who know their way around the kitchen. Yeah. So, very good. And uh, what about you, Delroy? Do you have a cooking show that you like to watch, Finley? Um, I, I like cook, watching cooking shows, but a specific one, I'm not too sure. Perhaps Master Chef. Yeah. Okay, the Master Chef, and that's Master Chef Canada, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like the uh, the Anthony Bourdain show, where he interviews and talks to people the, the way we're talking here today, which is nice. You get to know people and you get to know cultures. Yeah. Um, let me ask you, Finley, if I was to take you to a deserted island, okay? And you can only bring one type of food with you. What would you bring? One type of food? Yeah. That is, that's a tough question. Um, perhaps, if I'm lazy, ramen noodles. Ramen noodles. Just in the cup so I can just eat it whenever. Okay. That's something and I like to All eat. you need is uh, water, right? You know, I don't even think you need uh, fresh water because you boil it, right? Yeah, and then I could just start a fire and then Very good. Going. What about you, Delroy? If you had to go somewhere and uh, you could only bring one food item, what would you bring? If I can only bring one food item, um, I'd probably bring bananas. Bananas? bananas? Yeah. Really? 
Would you bring like the Jamaican banana? Sure. Yeah. They have uh, in Jamaica a slightly different size, different style of banana. Mm -hmm. I think we in Canada, we eat the uh, Cavendish banana. That's the variety. Mm -hmm. And in Jamaica, they used to grow, they used to uh, produce Le Gros John, yeah. I think, or Le Gros Michel, Michel. Mm -hmm. The bananas in Jamaica are very sweet. They're smaller, delicious. Yeah. I, I, you know what I like uh, from Jamaican uh, food is the plantain. Plantain. Oh, the plantain is good, eh? Yes. Yeah. Okay, now I hear that rice is cooking, Finley. Yep. It's so going. it's very good. So where did you come across this menu of the bourbon chicken? Um, well, I made chicken breast last time I was here. Okay. And I made it at home again, and I really enjoyed it. So when I was looking for a recipe, I found... So this has been uh, tested yeah, at yeah. your home, well, eh? Kind of. But yeah, very good. Yeah, so I wanted to um, put some rice on the chicken and then the sauce also on top of the chicken. Yes. So your um, yeah, your your family probably enjoy the uh, what you created. Right? The chicken breast, yeah, they, they love it. Now, love where it. is it harder? Is it harder to cook at school or at home, or harder to cook here on TV? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, I'd, I'd say TV. Yeah, I'd say TV. TV is the hardest, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because if you make a mistake, like thousands of people will know it, right? Yeah. And then it'll <laughs> run on reruns. And, um, now, why you guys are both in the high skills major program? For people who are at home who want to know what high skills majors are, maybe you could describe the program and why you decided to take it because it's extra work, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I personally decided to take it because I know that both my mom and my father have backgrounds in cooking, and they want they don't want me like not to be able to know how to cook when I leave. So I want to make sure that I can cook so that I can like keep up with like a really stable family and so that one day my wife doesn't have to cook every single day. Oh, yeah. so that's very nice. Very, what about you, Finley? Um, I remember one day I, I was perhaps seven, eight, and I went to my mom and I said, Mom, teach me how to cook. <laughs> and then she didn't really teach me because, I don't know, she just didn't want to. And then. Not too long ago, uh, when I first came into high school, I've been thinking about it, about going for a, this course, how the hospitality course, because I really enjoy cooking, uh, yeah, cooking, sorry, and then, I don't know, I just, it's something that I find really fun and relaxing. And my sister would always tease me and say, every girl likes a guy who can cook. Wow. So. <laughs> yeah, the way to a woman's heart is uh, through their stomach. <laughs> it used to be that way uh, for, uh, for men. But uh, the Specialist High Skills Major, or SHISM program, uh, we offer it in culinary at Cardinal Leger School. And some schools offer it, but there aren't too many in our board. So these young people who are in the program, they learn all of the uh, important parts of culinary and cooking, but they also uh, take uh, courses that help get them uh, uh, certificates or you get like kind of credits uh, what are some of the seminars that you guys have to take as part of your course um, one of them uh, would be like we have to take a two credit co-op in a restaurant for a semester that'll help us like get some experience in the workplace and okay. also in like restaurant jobs and it also looks good on your resume if you're trying to apply places after school so they're going, to, they're going to get a diploma, right? And they've got to take things like food hygiene and refrigeration. And so they're going to get a, a diploma that's going to have these magnificent red seals on them, right? Yeah. And you will literally, like if you go to college or university to take courses, you're going to have like advanced standing, right? Yeah. So you guys are really thinking ahead. So there are these high skills major programs or schisms are out there, if you have a son or daughter who's going into high school, you should really ask and inquire. And you could call uh, Ms. Greco at Cardinal Legier, and she would give you information about the program we have. And I know there are other schools in the area that offer it too. It's not just at Legier, but not all of them do. Well, it smells fantastic. And I have to tell you too, uh, Finley, that, that I'm getting like this uh, Louisiana feel here. <laughs> I feel like some Dixieland jazz music. Yeah. So you're hitting a pretty high note too. So in the sauce, I put a bunch of different seasonings as you can see here. There's um, onions, soy sauce, a little bit of water, a little bit of vinegar, 
um, vegetable oil, brown sugar, apple juice, and... Apple juice? Yeah, wow. apple juice. And then, this seems a little crazy, but with a little twist, just a little bit of ketchup. A little bit of ketchup? Yeah. A little bit of ketchup <laughs> in your food. Hey, uh, just how important is it when you guys cook? Do you follow recipes exactly, or do you kind of freestyle? Um, I, I, I freestyle. I don't, yeah. like, when I, when I see a recipe, yes, I would like to try it, and I would like to see how it's made. But so, then, so is that ketchup, is that a freestyle there? Yeah, that is. Oh, look and at then, this. This looks pretty good here. There's also um, little, like, tweaks that you can apply to it that will come to your needs and what you think would be better because not everyone has the same opinion yes so Very just true. whatever you think so so both of you kind of identified uh, that uh, if you were if you were making food for your uh, for your girlfriend yeah you'd make it extra special right extra special oh yeah yeah, yeah. all the love yeah. in the world <laughs> <laughs> good well we've already established that it's a uh, you guys are 21st century men yeah <laughs> very good okay so this looks very typical. This looks like what you would get normally, right? This yeah. is normal poutine. And this is the Jamaican edition. Yes, it is. And over here, oh, okay. So the chicken is cooking up very, very nice, Finley. Yep. Okay, I can hardly wait. The sounds, the smells, everything is so nice. So is there uh, anyone that you guys would like to say hello to that, that's uh, maybe watching or your hope is watching tonight? Um, hi mom, hi dad. Hi dad. Uh, I'd like to give a big shout out to my family. Uh, without them, I wouldn't be here, you know. Very nice. Yeah. And family, what about you? Uh, like he said, my family and my friends who have helped me through a lot and helped me to become who I am today okay. and enjoy everything I do today. And okay. Is there a, a special is. person of the love of your life that you'd like to say hi to as well? Not yet. Not yet. Future one, I guess. Oh, okay. Future one, <laughs> yes. So if there was a young uh, girl that was uh, watching this show and thought you guys were kind of cute, which they are, they could maybe call this and that you, they would give you their your email or yep. just be like a dating show. Wow. <laughs> you guys signed up for more than what you expected when I you did. came here today. <laughs> okay, so I see the cheese. We got the oil. Let's move the oil out of the way. And now he's putting the uh, the Jamaican toppings on top of the, uh, the poutine. I just need a fork here, and I'll take one from the Rogers Community Kitchen uh, fork stash back there. Now I'm going to try this first, okay? Wait, wait, wait. one second. Yeah. Will you try it? It's awesome. Oh, of course. There you go. Okay. Yeah, man. Everything I read here, man. <laughs> People back on the yard. <laughs> mm. Oh, man. Fantastic. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and I just got to sneak over here. I hope the uh, camera can keep track. Finley, this is awesome. Just Thank the presentation you. and everything while you've been talking. I'm going to have some chicken. The raging Cajun heaven. Oh, okay. I've got this right for unique spice over there. But this is worth the trip to Cardinal Reggio. Exquisite. I want to thank you both. This has just been so much fun getting to know you. Delroy Finley, we're very proud of you. You've been watching Rogers Community Kitchen. Please uh, continue to watch. And uh, we bring you the best of student cooking in the region of Peel. <laughs>